What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Brian Garcia Toronto and this is Toronto Racing. Now, I'm gonna try and continue these regular style vlogs to give you guys a better look at what it is I do daily or, you know, on the weekends, just so you guys see the, uh, some of this takes a lot of work and just kinda wanna show you guys just a little peek into my everyday life. Uh, it's Sunday, Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all you guys. By the time you watch this, Father's Day, Father's Day will be over but happy Father's Day. So I just left the gym, I still got my wrist straps on, I still got my headphones, uh, but I'm actually headed to the uh, hardware store to go get those bolts that I needed for the lower rocker molding because my plastic rivets, I mean, I got some pretty big ones, but they don't reach into the fender and the fender liner to hold it together. But if you drop the lower splash shield, you can put some bolts and you can put some hardware back there. So pretty much that's all I'm gonna go do is get, you know, four or five bolts so I can finish the lower rocker moldings and I got some new shocks for the Daytona, but we'll get into that a little bit later. I don't even know if I'll get to that today, but if I do, it'll be freaking astonishing. So let's uh, get this hardware. Let's finish buttoning up all the little details on the Challenger and maybe we'll start on the Daytona. So let's go. All right guys, so I got my hardware. I'm back home and I set up my little shade area, kind of working to be away from the sun. I'm actually hiding in my wheel well right now. Uh, and I'm working on putting those bolts on the side uh, rocker molding and I kind of had to do like the dance of the sugar plum fairies here and you got to like move the fender liner again and then put one bolt put the fender liner in put the other bolt and then put the rivet so I'm gonna show you guys that all right yesterday I put this plastic rivet in um, but in order to get to this bolt right here that I put you need to remove the liner so you have to remove the liner put this top one in put the liner back in put this bolt in and then if you remove this little splash shield here, you have room to work in right under there. And then you can go ahead and put the liner back in and put in the uh, plastic rivet. Thank God I actually found a whole bag of those bigger rivets that I was talking about, these ones right here. So I had plenty, so I just broke that one off. I'll be able to replace it now shortly. All right, 10 second update. I didn't end up putting that one in there because this is so, it ain't going nowhere. And the hassle of reaching up in there to put that one bolt, it just, See how tight it is down in there? I just figured it wasn't worth it. This is tight. This is back on. Uh, fender liner is back on, so I'm gonna rock it just like that. I don't know some of you internet people are gonna say like, oh, that's not the right way. Guess what, it works, okay? So it is the right way. All right. All right, so now I've got the passenger side all buttoned up. Uh, really happy with the way everything's come out, honestly. Um, now I've gotta move on. There goes my receipt. Now we've got to move on to the driver's side. Let me go grab that receipt. So on the driver's side, yesterday, the only thing I didn't do was the rear uh, rocker molding back there, the fender liner, and I need to do the same thing on the front of the rocker molding that I just did on the passenger side. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. And hmm, I really got to think about what's left. It seems like there was so much to do and now I can't think about it. But all right, boys. Let's keep it going because the more time I waste, the hotter it gets. Another reason I'm so excited to finish this car is because it gives me so much more time to finish the Jeep. And I made a promise to myself that it was going to run and drive before summer's over. I've had the thing for four years. It's been a long road with the Jeep and I'm ready to drive it. I'm sure you guys who built your cars understand that. Um, so once I'm completely done buttoning this thing up, get it back to DJ so he can cut and buff the paint so it really starts shining, which is incredible because it's there's so much gold flake in the pearl. Uh, the car looks so good already. I can only imagine when he buffs it. So get this car buffed once the car is at DJ's again. I'll move the Jeep front and center and then I'll start cranking out on this thing because really there's not much left. Still gotta figure out why it's not cranking. Get the exhaust put on, time it, tune the carb, Align it, on the road, baby. So that's why I'm really excited and I've been grinding on the Challenger. So let's get back to work. All right, guys, sorry about the wind noise. Got all that done, got the lower rocker molding on there. Everything's done, except of course the rear diffuser. If you watched yesterday's video, I'm missing two nuts. 
So what I'm gonna do today, I already ordered the speaker because I'm pretty sure it is a blown speaker on the driver door. But I'm gonna move that one over here and see if uh, we get the same rattle. All right guys, so if you ever wanna remove your door speakers, it's just four Phillips head screws and your speaker comes out. My 09 has the Boston Acoustics uh, sound system. My 06 Charger SRT had the kicker audio system with the 10 inch subwoofer and it sounded freaking amazing, especially for factory. So if you ever want to change out your door speakers and upgrade them like for like a really easy way is if you can find like the Harman Cordon or the kicker sound system for your car, everything's plug and play. Just remove your old stuff and plug your new stuff in. So anyways, I'm going to check if the speaker works, uh, make sure there's not a rattle on the door. I'm not going to put that on camera because of copyright reasons and music. But if there is a rattle, that means something's loose back there. So let me dig into this. Good news, guys. The speaker's blown. <laughs> Sounds so, you know, so backwards. But yeah, the speaker's blown. So I already ordered a new one for now. Uh, it was only like 50 bucks. Um, one of the same exact uh, Daimler Chrysler Boston Acoustics made in Mexico. Boston Acoustics made in Mexico. So anyways, I got the same one. Uh, this one's blown. So I'm going to go ahead and just archive this bad boy right because we're not going to be using it i'm just going to leave that door speaker in the driver's side and the new one i'll put in the passenger side that way i can put uh, this door panel on and just be done with that because the door panels are just collecting dust inside the garage so i'm one step closer to finishing everything the next thing i'm going to do is actually pull these uh, status racing seats out because one i need to really clean them and clean the interior of this car and i need to reseat uh, my rear seat delete uh, it's loose when I pushed it out from inside the trunk, you can't really pull it back in anyway. You have to push it from inside the car. But with the roll cage and the seats don't move, they're stationary. Like I could not fit between the seats and underneath the roll bar right there to push it back in. So I decided, let me just wait. When I pull the status seats out, clean these up, tighten everything up again, we'll go ahead and push the rear seat delete back in. Um, other than that, I need to put the status racing harnesses back in here. Uh, I removed them when I took the car to get painted and I need to adjust them for uh, for me to fit me and I usually set the passenger side for Ashley so she's my primary uh, passenger uh, I'm talking about the length on the top harnesses but anyways um, let me go ahead and put this door panel on clean it up and then I'll start pulling I'll start pulling the passenger seat out first so I can keep moving the car back and forth all right guys I just had a little lunch had to take a little break it's so hot outside probably said that a million times in the last two videos. So I went ahead and I got the uh, passenger side status racing seat out. So I'm gonna head and clean that up and make sure all the mounting hardware on it is nice and tight. I pulled out the top portion of the rear seat delete because it is freaking covered in dirt. And I already reseated the uh, back portion of the rear seat delete. Uh, I gotta vacuum out the top of the deck lid and clean up the rear seat delete as well. There's a ton of dirt, ton of dust all over the interior of this car. But that's to be expected when you're constantly driving out all these tracks with the windows open because it's hot. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna hit and pull the vacuum out, vacuum out that interior, and then I'll show you guys the way everything looks once I'm done. But first, I'll show you guys the uh, status racing seats and how I have them mounted up. That's pretty much how you do it. You buy, they give you these brackets, they go to the seat, and then the brackets bolt to the planted seat technology bracket. I got a whole, I got a couple of videos with a different set of seats and these seats on how to do that. Here's the lower portion of the rear seat delete. As you can see, when I travel with Annie, uh, she's got her little red hair everywhere and there's just tons of dirt and stuff on this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this net and uh, vacuum it all out. So make sure everything's nice and clean. All right guys, so I buttoned up everything I needed to do uh, over the weekend. I put the seats back in, I vacuumed everything. I'm still waiting on that door speaker so I can put that door panel back in and the interior will be almost done. But the good news is that my good friends over at Vicrez.com, the original company that I got my wide body from, my first wide body, uh, sent me out a nice little gift. And this is one piece of the Challenger that I've always disliked and I can finally change it out with a carbon, forged carbon with the LED display steering wheel. So I'm not gonna install it today. In this video, I'm gonna do more of a formal install because there really isn't a video out there to show you guys with the pre-2015 challengers on how to install the steering wheel. All right, now don't worry about the paint because this is just like a really soft plastic. 
So looking at the steering wheel, uh, the options that I chose were a forged carbon around the majority of the steering wheel. And then I got this perforated leather with the orange stitching to match the Challenger. Uh, as you can see, it pretty much matches looking at the paint and the stitching around the handles. There's also forged carbon here in the uh, thumb grip area. And then for the buttons er uh, button area here, I got the just regular carbon fiber weave. Now the other really cool part, I also got a carbon fiber uh, weave right there. The other cool part is the uh, LED display. So it comes with a smart box and uh, some simple wiring. You see you got some extra wires right here uh, to make everything work. Now I'm not gonna install it here, but in the future I will do the future install video for this steering wheel on the pre-2015 Challenger. All right guys, so I'm really excited because that is the last piece of the interior that I want to finish out on the Challenger. I can finally get rid of that ugly steering wheel. Uh, leather starting to uh, tear on it. I'm the second owner of this car. Uh, so just the abuse I put the steering wheel through. I've tried to keep it clean, but the leather's starting to peel. It's a giant circle. This new steering wheel's got the flat bottom. It's got nicer hand grips. Uh, so it's gonna be a huge difference and just tie the whole interior together. Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video. If you guys like these videos, hit that like button, leave a comment below. And if you love these videos, Hit that subscribe button. Until next time, guys. Peace out.